Welcome to the Cleaning Up Business Podcast. My name's Chris Gilfoyle. I'm going to be your host on a bi-weekly basis, and this is our pilot episode of our Cleaning Up Business Podcast. As you can see, I have no guest opposite me this week. The plan is, on a bi-weekly basis, we're going to bring you industry and business-leading guests on a bi-weekly basis and listen to their story and hopefully give you guys some takeaways as to what you can implement in your life and business. But for today's episode, I thought I'd give you guys an introduction into who I am and how I arrived to sit in this chair today. So my name's Chris Kilfoyle. I am a cleaning entrepreneur based in the south of the UK. I'm 35 years of age. And in today's episode, I'm going to give you a little bit of an overview about how I got to here and my life up until 35. So I'll go back to my school days. I enjoyed school, although I think I had the academic capability. I chose not to apply myself at school and much over I tried to mess around with my friends and give the teacher probably a hard time, more of a hard time than they certainly deserved. When I left school, I left with minimal grades. Again, although I had the capabilities, I believe, I just didn't apply myself. So I left with minimal grades and not really much of an outlook about what my career would look like moving forward. I took a job with Associated Newspapers. That was the very first job I had delivering newspapers for the London Evening Standard. There was a time that they used to sell the Evening Standard. I know it's free nowadays, but they used to have vendors that used to distribute this across London, and I used to deliver newspapers to those vendors across London. I was made redundant from that role as they went to a free edition, um, making their money for advertising, and I was a bit of a loose end. Now, I was very fortunate enough that both of my parents have had steady careers in the commercial cleaning industry for as long as I can remember. And me, worried about where my beer tokens were going to come from, I went and took a job with my mother. Um, So it's always nice to have someone you know in the industry. I took a job with my mother in a government building in central London as a cleaning supervisor. I had no commercial cleaning experience whatsoever and I started that role fresh-eyed at 18 in London. This particular contract was a very large account for a national facilities management company. I think it off the top of my head it around 60 cleaners per day that worked on this particular contract through varying different shifts and I learned the operational know-how of commercial cleaning on this particular account. So I got a full understanding of how a DOC, a daily office clean, would operate and understood the logistics of that and the challenges that come with that. And I was also very fortunate enough that this particular account had three specialist operatives. I still remember the name. It was Bill and Alan were the main two there. I don't know what they're doing now. I'd imagine they're retired. And these two guys were specialist operatives. So what they would do they would carry out periodic works. And over around a two-year period, I learned stripping floors, high-level cleaning, window cleaning, and all the ad hoc services that would come with most cleaning contracts these days. So I seen the business from two different aspects, the day-to-day commercial cleaning and the specialist cleaning. One thing I quickly learned while being on this particular account was the age-old saying, it's not what you know, it's who you know. And I believe personality and likability played a big factor in my career development moving forward. So on this particular account, over very quickly, I got very friendly with some of the clients and customers that were on this site, a very large facilities management company, developed some relationships with various stakeholders on that account and got some good recognition, which in turn enabled me to get some recognition within the business I was working for. After around 18 months to two years on this particular account, I actually went for a job with the client of this particular account. Now, I was unsuccessful on this occasion, but that was a great learning curve. And I do wonder what my life would have looked like if I had got that role. I imagine it would have taken a slightly different steer and I probably wouldn't be sat here with my own business today, I reckon. I would have been what I call an entrepreneur. So I would have been hopefully relatively high up within a company, maybe not have my own business, but that wasn't meant to be. And subsequently, after two years on this particular account and learning all aspects of the commercial cleaning field, I took another job for the same company, managing 157 sites across the Royal Borough of Chelsea and Kensington. 
Now, this was industrial cleaning on a massive scale. We had over 100 employees on this particular account, and I was the assistant account manager for the entire borough. So we would look after common area and communal space for a large housing association um, housing association in the borough of Chelsea and Kensington. So we would work in massive high-rise blocks to some of the wealthiest communal spaces in that borough. It is quite an affluent borough. And again, this only bolstered me in terms of learning the business from the ground up, which is obviously a great way to learn any business in any, any industry from the bottom up. I mean, okay, some people go to uni and they jump in at different levels. But for me, this gave me a fantastic overview of how, especially in the commercial cleaning field, it operates from the bottom all the way up. One thing I do find in the industry, you get people um, that come in at different levels because they have different skill sets and their operational knowledge can be lacking. So if you've got someone that's selling a multi-million pound cleaning account, which I was dealing with at the time, and they don't really have any operational nous or understanding of how cleaning operations work, that can be difficult because then what they do is they generally oversell and that makes it hard for the operations team to deliver. So you're overselling and underdelivering, which is never good in any industry. So working at Chelsea and Kenza, and I was there for around 12 months. Again, fantastic team, met some fantastic people, some people that are still there today. Um, I think of a couple of people, Steve Warwick, uh, Philip Howe. These are people that I worked with, um, and they gave me some real good life lessons from dealing with people from a cleaning perspective, people that are cleaners, street cleaners, up until some of the highest people within Royal Borough of Chelsea and Kensington. And again, I held very good relationships with the customers on these accounts, which in turn, again, gave me good feedback to my peers about how I presented myself, how I managed, and that gave me more opportunities to progress with this facilities management company. I won't go into every individual role that I held within that company, But from the borough of Chelsea and Kensington, I moved on to a project-based role where I was delivering Lean and Six Sigma methodology into the cleaning process. So it's basically looking at a cleaning process and saying, right, how can I reduce waste within this process? And what do I mean by waste? So Sandra would get her cleaning kit from on the third floor. She'd get to the seventh floor and realize that she forgot something because her trolley wasn't prepped. So small things like making sure every car is prepped with the right tools to do the job, that reduces the need for Sandra to move all over the building. Um, so I implemented that across London and the South East. We then rolled out that methodology nationally, which enabled me to work up and down the country with varying different clients, from Mercedes-Benz to Buckingham Palace to national banks um, to hospitality industries such as Bupa. So it's gave me a real diverse range of knowledge within the cleaning industry and the different sectors within the industry because the way you would clean a hospital or a doctor's surgery would be drastically different to how you maybe clean a high-rise tower in Canary Wharf. So I carried on with the Clean Smart methodology and my project-based role for around another 12 months. And then some changes within the business moved me into a national account manager role for projects. So what I would effectively do was mobilize large national multi-site projects across the UK. So a good reference for these would be uh, a bank. So one of them was a building society with branches all over the UK, and I was responsible for the mobilization of these new projects from them winning a tender to actually delivering and day one on site and everything in between. So that would be any capex costs that would be going on. So buying machinery equipment for those contracts, any training, any TUPI, which was another point. So making sure the TUPI consultations and just making sure the various different aspects of this business were all pulling in the right direction, ready for our day one mobilization. I'd say that got me across the whole of the UK from planes in the morning to Scotland in the day and then back the same day for another meeting in London that night. It was a busy time, but again, gave me some fantastic knowledge and a real diverse range of skills within different aspects of the business. From there, the last stop in my journey employed, I was a regional property manager managing around £10 million worth of business in London for a particular large property management portfolio. 
A lot of them were banks and they were in and around the city. Um, the likes of Credit Suisse, you know, some of the, the European medical agency in Canary Wharf, real big high rise towers. I would be there as an initial point of contact for any key stakeholders within that business, team. managing a large amount of teams. So I had account managers and directors reporting into me. And I also had four or five area managers for what the, this particular business called nominal business. So that was basically any client with a spend under 75k per annum um, so that your one two cleaner accounts that some of these cleaning companies had I had them reporting it reporting into me and I believe I had around 12 direct reports at that particular time and I would go around these accounts make sure the customer was happy and it was a real good time um, but during my career and me realizing that I wasted my time at school I always felt and had a keen interest in personal development entrepreneurship and I did always say to myself look maybe one day Chris you can do this for yourself certainly I believed I could so around 2013 my younger brother who is is one of our directors within the business James he manages our specialist services division and my dad who worked for another large facilities management company we tabled the idea of starting out on our own in the southeast we spoke about it and with very minimal capital, we got some cleaning equipment, which is relatively cheap to do. And I started sending outbound messages predominantly on LinkedIn to office managers, directors of SME businesses in Kent, in my local area. And I was fortunate enough to get some some feedback and some bites. And we managed to take on some accounts. Now, these accounts... Today, our accounts, interestingly, that, you know, our business has outgrown. But these would be very small offices like we have here at JCD HQ that maybe have one cleaner for one hour on a Friday ready for them to come in on a Monday. And James had been made redundant from a role at that particular time. So he was at a loose end. So he would go round and clean these contracts himself on a Friday. I would go round and help him when I could. But I was still employed during this time. Um, and over the course of between 2013 to 2014, I continued to do my day job, which was interesting. My management team was remote. I was working all over the southeast of London, so I was pretty flexible. I never let it affect my day job, and I left the particular company that I built my career with in 2014 on very good terms. They actually did offer me a substantial pay package to stay, but JCD, the business I now operate, was already starting to snowball. And in 2014, I made the decision to leave my employment. The company, JCD Cleaning, had enough commercial accounts to pay for me, Don and James, the three owners and directors of JCD Cleaning. So I left my employment in 2014 and I have never looked back. We are now in 2023 and our business has gone from zero clients to zero employments, and we now have seven figures in revenue, near 100 employees across the whole of the UK, actually, although we're not necessarily a national contractor just yet, and we're continuing to grow on a yearly basis. We're starting to work with some fantastic customers. We're working with brand names that if I mentioned on camera, you guys would know instantly their household recognized names and the business continues to gain momentum on a yearly basis. During my time at JCD, it's had many ups and downs and I won't go into the ups and downs of that in this podcast today. We're going to try and keep this one relatively brief and succinct, but I'm sure over the coming episodes, you will hear me discuss the many ups and downs that businesses has along the journeys. It has its highest of its high points and, of course, its lowest of its low points. Retrospectively, was it what I expected, being a business owner? Definitely not. I think it's over-glamorized now on social media how easy it is to go from six figures within six weeks. And the reality of that is business is hard. Having your own business is hard. It's very lonely. Although I have a good support network, at times you can feel like you're totally disconnected from everyone else. So bringing some of the lessons that I've learned as a normal guy, um, you know, I have no privileged upbringing, although I had a good upbringing. I don't come from a particularly wealthy background or a trust fund. I have built this business and my career from the bottom up. And you guys can do that first, but I want to give you 
a real life example of what that takes, some of the trials and tribulations that may lie ahead, and hopefully give you some lessons so you don't make mistakes, or indeed if they're key takeaways, you can take away some positive points and put them into your business or life journey from the off. We carried on growing JCD and we will carry on doing that, but since we've started JCD, mainly in the last two years, we have been on a real big push for our content journey. And hopefully some of you guys have transferred over from seeing some of our content across multiple platforms. Why do we put content out for the cleaning industry specifically? The reason for that is there is a very limited number of people in the industry that do content well. People coming into the industry now, especially the younger generation, do not consume content how I consumed content when I was 18, 21. It's a totally different landscape now. And I believe the cleaning industry specifically is way behind in terms of its content production. I think companies seem to believe that putting a generic stock image out on Canva is good social media. I think what we're trying to do at JCD Cleaning, Grey Water Drainage, and me as a personal brand is give you guys a glass window into the cleaning industry, some of the fantastic opportunities and stories as that industry holds, and the many crossovers that an industry that maybe you wouldn't think as glamorous or that it's not as salubrious as maybe, you know, some of the other industries you see on social media where there's Ferraris going around, although I can tell you categorically there are cleaning business owners that drive Ferraris, and hopefully we'll have some of them on this podcast, that A business such as cleaning has so many lessons and life-transforming stories that we're going to get them on this podcast. So we're trying to give the cleaning industry a push into the mainstream, get it in front of these lights so people can actually understand what goes on in our industry. An example, I come in the industry from the bottom up, but I'll give an example of the many different facets you can come into the industry. And hopefully we'll have guests from retrospective parts of the industry so you can understand how diverse it is and how they journeyed into the industry so you can have sales you can have marketing which adam behind the camera does you can own your own business which i do there are robotics there is chemical engineering with the chemicals we use you could be operationally minded there's engineering roles within the cleaning industry there's so many different facets to this industry and i believe we need to be pushing it forward more using social media as the positive platform that it can be when it's done right. So that's why we're putting out content on a regular basis. So make sure you go over to all of our social channels, YouTube, Instagram, LinkedIn, type JCD cleaning and make sure you check us out. So what is the goal of the podcast in particular? So we're going to be giving you guys a bi-weekly episode where we're going to have different guests. Some of them will be from the commercial cleaning field. Some of them will be general business entrepreneurs, or they might be from a different business that feeds into the cleaning and wider business community. Again, to give you some takeaways, stories, life lessons, and hopefully some inspiration to carry on with your journey. We've got around 50 guests lined up on our to-do list or wish list already. We've started reaching out to them. We've had some fantastic guests come in already and film a podcast with us. And we're confident that you guys are going to find this ultra interesting and hopefully many takeaways for you guys to transfer into your own business or your future business or even your career and life. So that's a little bit of an overview of me and the podcast and what you can expect moving forward. We're going to be on YouTube and all your favorite podcasting platforms. So make sure you go and subscribe on those channels, whatever they are. If you're listening exclusively on audio, then make sure you head over to YouTube and check us out and vice versa. If you're on YouTube, make sure you subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. So hopefully you found that interesting, a little bit of information about me, and I will obviously be divulging more about my personal journey in subsequent episodes with my guests, and I look forward to taking you guys on the journey that this is going to be in 2023.